What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech and I'm gonna be working on this junk TV. This is a Samsung LCD TV. This is not an LED TV, this is an LCD TV. Uh, difference between LED and LCD, you guys probably already know, but for those that don't, LED TV basically has an LED backlight strip. It still has an LCD screen, just has different backlight circuit. Anyhow, this TV has no power and this was uh, recycled. It's basically junk TV. Uh, someone abandoned my brother does home theater. He takes broken TVs off the wall recycles them to me and I try to fix them This is this TV is almost 10 years old. So <laughs> it's not really worth too much money But it has a lot of great features It has one two three four HDMI inputs It has one two two component inputs uh, I believe it's 1080p it has uh, 3.5 audio out, 3.5 audio uh, millimeter audio out, um, digital optical out. It has um, LAN, uh, Ethernet jack. So I guess uh, maybe I have, might have smart apps. Who knows? I'm not sure. Maybe the, um, this Ethernet port is only for updates. We'll find out. But um, it also has uh, standard composite input on the side right here. So if you want to plug in your old school PlayStation 1 or Nintendo, you could do that. And of course it has RF plug or jack. So you could play, uh, you know, basic cable or in your Atari 2600. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. It has no power, not even a standby light on the front. It's completely dead. I plug it in, hit power. I even got the TV remote. And I know the remote's good. I put new batteries in. And then when you shine the remote at um, a digital camera, it should pick up the IR blaster or IR sensor in here. See that? Those flickering lights. Human eye can't see that. It's infrared. But the camera does pick it up. And so I know this remote is working. So I hit TV and power. I don't get no response. So. The buttons on the front don't do anything. The buttons on the remote don't do anything. There's no standby light. That's where we're at so far with this TV. All right, so let's go ahead and unplug it, open it up. I already unscrewed it all, so you don't have to wait for that. Yeah. This is the power supply. This uh, supplies the standby voltage to the main logic board. And the main logic board controls all the logic functions like on, off, volume, menu, uh, picture stuff like that uh, And then over here is the inverter board on an LCD TV. You'll see an inverter board like this That's connected to the um, CCFL tubes um, behind this and that illuminates the screen You'll get the brightness on the screen. So if you have a very dark image Then you could have a problem with the CCFL uh, Tubes or the inverter board or maybe there's no voltage going to the board but that is part of the backlight circuit, this right here, inverter board. On LED TV, it's called a LED driver board. Um, and this supplies the power, high voltage. So make sure you don't touch this, it's high voltage. It'll knock you on your ass. And that goes to here. I did a video how to check the high voltage. Use a CCFL tube. Anyhow, um, our main focus is checking the standby voltage. Why is that standby light not turning on? That's the indicator letting you know there's something wrong with the power. So when you don't see a standby light and the TV's plugged in, first thing you do is check the standby voltage and find out is it there or not. So it's, I'm guessing it's a logical guess is power, power board issue or main logic board issue as of right now. Let's go ahead and use the multimeter. This is my Fluke. This is the output going to the main logic board. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, the main logic board also um, sends a signal to the TCON board right here under this plate. That's the cable you see, the TCON connection. It's a ribbon cable. And this gives you the picture on the LCD screen. So sometimes if you don't get any picture or half a screen and half a picture, it could be a bad TCON board. On Sony TVs, it's very common to be a bad TCON board. Uh, older like a KDL TV but I don't think this is the issue so there is a um, possibility that the TCOM board can cause 
some issues where the TV doesn't turn on, but you should still have standby voltage. So just throwing that out there so you guys know. Over here, there's a chart and it tells you um, this is five volts standby voltage. Let's go ahead and check that. So this is one, two, three, five volts. One, two, three. There we go. All right, so there's a problem here. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. See that? Five volts, and then it goes to zero, and then it goes once again to five volts, zero, and five volts again. It's bouncing it around, so the voltage is not steady. And then the next one, one, two, three, let's check the voltage right here. It should be five volts also. 5.1, back down to zero. There's an issue. It's probably a power supply issue. What causes voltage to jump around like that is uh, bad capacitors usually, uh, voltage regulator. Those are things that um, regulate the voltage and keeps the voltage steady. But if you guys don't wanna, if you're a novice tech and you just wanna fix your TV and get it up and running, you don't wanna deal with all this nonsense and buying meters and tools and all that, you could just buy the power supply board at shop, uh, shopjimmy.com or electroparsonline.com. That board probably cost maybe 30, 40 bucks, comes with a warranty. And so that's a really easiest, fastest way to fix your TV. So let's go ahead and unplug this and just pinch and pull these cables. Don't pull on the cable itself, just the connector. Some of them are kind of tough. All right. And use a low torque drill. I'm gonna lower it to four. And remove that. So those are ways to get into the TV repair business. Definitely through a home theater tech or a company. All right, so I don't see any burn marks or scorching. I don't think anything burnt up. Uh, all these parts look physically good on the back. Once again, all the parts look like they're in good shape. So I don't think um, there's an issue there. There's a fuse here and a fuse over here. Usually those are good. If you're getting standby voltage come out of here, usually it doesn't mean, usually the fuse is fine. If you're getting zero voltage, that then I would check the fuse for sure. So we're gonna check these capacitors and we can check these capacitors. There's some capacitors over here and some, um, the voltage regulator I believe is right here. I can't read the number off of it, but I believe it's usually on a heat sink. The difference between a voltage regulator, well, a voltage regulator looks like a transistor, but it acts like an IC. So keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and we're gonna use my in-circuit capacitor meter. I haven't used this in a while. So let's go ahead and might as well use it, right? It's a hundred bucks, calibrate it. And to do that, you just clamp these together, positive, negative, and then hit this button right here, zeroing. Please wait. So now it's calibrated. All right, so next. Let's go ahead and check some capacitors. I'm gonna start off with this one right here. This is 10 volt, 1000 microfarads. They usually go bad. If you feel a bubble on top of these capacitors, automatically just swap them out, change them out. It tells you on the bottom, good cap with low ESR. And this is a 0 0.02. So you look on the chart right here, and just to show you, this is a 1000 microfarads, 10 volt, all right, and it tells you worst um, case, and it tells you this is the worst case scenario. So you wanna make sure this is under, the value is under. So 1,000 microfarads, 10 volt, it should be under 0.12. You can see that, focus, focus, yeah, there you go. So you can see that right there. Should be under 0.12, and then once again, let's, I'll show you to read it. And is it under 0.12? Yes, it's the same thing, same value. All right, so once again, let's go ahead and read it, 
it tells you on the screen this is a good cap. Right here you'll see a stripe. See that silver part of the capacitor and there's dashes? That's the negative side of the capacitor. So put the black lead on the negative side. And this one is good as well. I don't know, the, the location is DM802. Can't read the part number though, it's too small. All right, so I'm gonna put my black lead, my negative lead on the outside of the part right here, and then the right, I'm positive lead on the other side. I'm reading the two terminals, two outside terminals on this one right here. Let me zoom in. I want you to see the meter too, by the way. That's why I have it like that. It's hard to read. Oh, there's something that's not good. Okay, let me reverse it. You should get. No. No, we shouldn't be getting that reading. Should get like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, or something like that around there. Now, to get a more accurate reading on your parts, remove the solder, take it out of circuit, and then read it again. All right, so it still reads bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can find these parts online. So I'm at shopjimmy.com and typed in the board number right here that's printed on the power board. Hit search and see what comes up. All right, so right here, the boards are, power boards are more expensive than I thought, 70 to $80. But look right up here is a repair kit. So there's a transistors, capacitors, voltage regulator, and fuses, and uh, there's a blue cap right there as well, which I, I haven't read. So there are some parts that I overlooked, and it looks like the shop Jimmy did the troubleshooting for us and included uh, common parts that go bad in this TV model. And that looks like the 1000 microfarads capacitors I was reading, transistors, and the voltage regulator. So this does make sense. These are the parts I was looking at. And right here on the bottom left, there's a little description. And symptoms, no power, dead. And no standby voltage. The first, so this is perfect. This is it. This is what we're having. This is the sim symptoms that we're having. So this looks legit. And let's check out right here. It tells you the location numbers too. Six capacitors, four transistors, one IC, two fuses. And here's all the model numbers that this TV repair kit fixes. There's a lot of TV models that it fixes, which is uh, surprising actually. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, purchase this and hopefully uh, it will fix the TV. This is a really great thing. I love their repair kits. I used them in the past and I have good luck with them. So I'm going to see what happens here and I'll keep you guys updated. So don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell notification to stay updated on the latest video. So guys, it looks like there's going to be a part two to this video. If you guys want to stay updated on the latest video and that video coming out soon, go ahead and subscribe to Tampa Tech. Click on that subscribe button down below and hit that bell notification to stay updated on the latest videos. I'm expecting um, the shipping uh, turnaround time between one to two weeks. Uh, I expect that video to be uploaded. Uh, I'm going to reorder the repair kit and I think it's um, the repair kit is a good amount of parts that it, it does make sense that uh, those parts will cause uh, the power to go on and off. So the capacitors, uh, you know, the voltage regulator, of course. So those parts look like they would fix the power supply. I'm pretty confident in that repair kit. And I used repair kits in the past. They seem to work, I would say, most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time they do fix the issue. But of course, if you just want to buy, buy the power board, I'm not going to look down on that. There's no, you know, you're just fixing your TV. That's the easiest way. You do have the board repaired. So there's pros and cons on both ends.
if you want to repair it yourself to component level, yes, uh, you'll save a lot of money if you fix it. But in the end, you can't spend more money if that does not fix it. So repairing your TV, just swapping out the board, may be uh, best interest to you guys if you guys don't have all that uh, you know, soldering skills and tools on hand. Yeah, if this video was informative, give me a big thumbs up. If you know anyone that this video may interest, click on the share button below and share this video to them. And of course, once again, if you want to stay updated on the latest videos, hit that bell notification, subscribe. Thanks guys for watching. Later.